The big news this week also is the strange death of Jeffrey Epstein. He was being prosecuted by the Southern District of New York, the Department of Justice. He was held in a federal facility in Manhattan, and he died. And uh, obviously, everyone is up in arms over this, and people want to know whether he was killed, whether he committed suicide, as the initial report suggests. Uh, you know, give us a feeling for why people ought to be concerned about this issue. Well, uh, Jeffrey Epstein obviously uh, was a, uh, a prominent figure with with a uh, a lot of dirt on a lot of people, primarily Democrats. I would I would note, uh, you know, as we know, George Mitchell, now former Senate Majority Leader, has uh, has been implicated uh, in uh, the Epstein's activities, shall we say, with underage girls, uh, other individuals, you know, include, of course, former President Bill Clinton, uh, former uh, New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson. In fact, that was litigation, that was private litigation brought, uh, it was a defamation lawsuit, I believe, brought by uh, Virginia Giuffre, uh, formerly Virginia Roberts, who was one of the girls who was trafficked, uh, who was, I believe, considered a sex slave of uh, Jeffrey Epstein. So he was prosecuted initially uh, several years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, he had an agreement with the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office in Florida mm -hmm. uh, that all crimes he committed were, were taken care of as a result of a state plea deal. And uh, there's been a lot of controversy about that deal, whether he got a slap on the wrist. So the Justice Department is prosecuting him again, or was prosecuting him again until he died, mm -hmm. uh, up in the Southern District of New York. And he was arrested denied bail um, about four or six weeks ago. He's found uh, lying on the floor. He'd either been attacked or potentially suicide attempt. Give us some background as to what the state of it, what was going on uh, just before he died. Right, the reports that came out relating, relating to that, I believe was July 23rd incident in which he is found in the fetal position of his, of his cell uh, in the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Manhattan. Uh, were kind of sketchy, you know. There, there, there was, there was not a whole lot of detail as to exactly how these injuries. They, they were, I believe, they they claimed there were ligature marks on his neck, which would be indicative of uh, strangling or, or, you know, or or hanging, a sort of a sort of injury. He's, well, there's a big difference. Either you're being hanged, or you're going to hang yourself, or someone's trying to choke <laughs> right. you to death. Well, Which well, one was it? Well, that's one of the <laughs> questions. It was never it was never clear as to whether these were self-inflicted injuries or uh, or inflicted by someone else. He was then put on suicide watch, which which would imply that he tried to hang himself on July 23rd. So he's put on suicide watch. He's on suicide watch, I believe, for something like six days. Right? Then he's taken off suicide watch, which I find that. Uh, well, bizarre to say the least, considering the the amount of information that this this individual had about very powerful figures. I would want personally. I would think you'd want eyes on him 24/7, uh, regardless of whether he was on suicide watch. I, I was shocked to to learn uh, that there were not cameras pointed into his cell, apparently, but just um, on the out in the exterior, on the, in the you know in the corridor uh, outside of his cell. Well, that's one of the things that, w that we're asking for from the Bureau of Prisons. We're asking for, in a, in a request I submitted uh, recently, uh, we're asking for all audio video recordings uh, of Jeffrey Epstein. We're asking for all psychological evaluations. We want the, the roster of guards that were uh, purportedly guarding him. Uh, we've asked for all communications about him among BOP officials. So a whole... A whole uh, well, why are we doing things. this, Bill? Isn't the Justice Department investigating itself? <laughs> Well, I think we, I think given the track record of the Justice Department in the last few years, um, you know, uh, looking at what they did, uh, pr what they attempted to perpetrate, which I guess will be part of uh, the, the, our next discussion, in terms of the attempted coup against, well, first the attempted, the attempted to derail a, a, uh, a, the Republican presidential candidate through a fraudulently predicated and, 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 a, and a protect and a protection racket for Hillary Clinton. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, well, one can't forget. We only have so much time, of course, right now to discuss all. This oh, we have all the time in the world. <laughs> well, we, we have we we have all the time in the world to go after these records. That's for sure, and yeah. and that's something we're going to we've been doing, and we're, we'll continue to do. So to be clear. Uh, there are these questions about the circumstances of his death. We still don't know whether it's suicide or homicide. Uh, at least the medical examiner hasn't released his autopsy report. And no matter what the answers are officially, because of the lack of credibility and the controversy of his death, 
there are going to be few Americans who are going to buy into it uh, or be satisfied with the answers. So we're not going to rely on the Justice Department to do it. Judicial Watch is doing its own investigation mm -hmm. through the Freedom of Information Act. So we have a, a several requests. We have a report, our investigative reporter, uh, chief investigative reporter, Micah Borson, is based in New York. He's doing his own independent journalism on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he had an interesting piece uh, where he asked questions, was it suicide or homicide, and a series of questions. And I thought one of the more interesting questions that our colleague Micah had was, was the scene where he was picked up, was that treated as a crime scene? Well, and and uh, a brilliant insight, obviously one of his sources is, uh, uh, not that Micah's not a smart guy, but this sounds to me like a sensible law enforcement question to be asked. And, I don't know if that's the case. I, I, I wonder if it was treated as a crime scene, was evidence preserved? Whenever, whenever, my understanding uh, is that whenever a, um, a suicide occurs under, uh, in custodial settings, that there is a uh, suicide reconstruction performed along with diagrams and everything else to ascertain exactly how the individual took his own life. Um, from what I understand, it's a fairly rare occurrence when, uh, when someone is on suicide watch for, for a successful suicide to take place. Uh, now, we know, of course... Well, of course, were, he wasn't on suicide watch. Well, well that, that's true, too. But, but what you have to remember now, now, even if you're, off, if you're not on suicide watch, they're supposed to be checking the cell every 30 minutes, but there's a three-hour gap, right? Uh, reportedly, it, reportedly, in w during which time uh, Epstein apparently took a, you know uh, committed suicide. Uh, now I've I've heard just recently I haven't had a chance to to read the reports myself, but I'm I'm hearing I've heard snippets that there was a uh, substitute guard uh, on duty that night. You know, my guess is the simplest explanation is that there was some corruption in the facility that. Uh, he helped engineer or someone helped them engineer to allow him to commit suicide you know but that's the most charitable interpretation of it right you know but because he knew so many people there are all going to be these questions about who's implicated and who had a motive in wanting to see him pass away right uh we have so we, we got the freedom of information act requests we've got um i guess we'll be asking the fbi for records on them I, you know, but in my view, Bill, I, I want your response to this, is the Justice Department is responsible for this man's death. Mm -hmm. it, they were in his, he was in their custody. Uh, the Justice Department runs the Bureau of Prisons. And to me, it's just a question of what the details are, what the culpability is, and the level of uh, uh, malfeasance or negligence or whatever. Uh, there's no question the Justice Department's responsible for it. And, uh, you know, as I talk about that, is how, how can a Justice Department investigate itself? Is there another way to get an official investigation of this because of the complicated, conflicted issues of the Justice Department's involvement? I, you know, we, we really, I don't think there is. I mean, now, Attorney General Barr, as you know, gave a very strong statement in which he said that there were two investigations ongoing. One, I believe, by the FBI that he, he had ordered and one by the Inspector General of, DA, of DOJ, I believe was the second one. Uh, heads are going to have to roll in this thing. I mean, everyone in my mind, everyone from the guards who are on duty to the head of the Bureau of Prisons should probably go, uh, and everyone in between. I mean, this, this is, as, as, you, you know, as you allude to, this was such a, a, an egregious um, failure. I mean, when, when you look at somebody with the, the information that Epstein had, um, you know, and the, the, the obvious uh, necessity to keep him alive and uh, monitored constantly, that, you know, it just beggars the, the question, uh, you know, how could, how could such a, a lapse occur? And it's going to raise, you know, especially given the, the you know, the, the, the FBI and DOJ history that we've discussed with, you know, regarding Hillary's email server and the, the, the fraudulently predicated the counterintelligence investigation against candidate Trump and then the attempt to, you know, essentially remove him from office uh, is just so, so out, you know, outside the, the bounds of anything we would ever have conceived of happening in, in our government that it naturally raises questions in everyone's mind.